Everybody, welcome to the Iron Road Way. We've got a, a special guest today, Mr. Steve Harmon, the Spartan Prez. Had a, a big day a couple days ago. We'll see if he wants to talk about that or not. I talked to him on that night, and it sounded like he was just warming up. Steve, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Billy. Good a to be here. Absolutely. So, Steve, tell us, uh, we're going to do a little bit of everything today. We're going to talk about you personally. We're going to talk about your business. We're going to talk about philosophies that you've got. We're going to talk about things that you're involved with. So, for starters, um, you started running Spartan Logistics 15 years ago? So, great question. Um, I joined the company as Chief Financial Officer uh, working with my dad, basically as second in command of the company, 23 years ago, wow. um, with a long-term succession plan in place, and took over as president in 2010, okay. about nine years ago. Okay, so you've been there 23 years. Uh, it, I've, I've earned every single one of these gray hairs, Billy. <laughs> so, so um, family business. Your dad starts the business. We gotta, we gotta make a note of this, guys. These guys have got to be nominated next year by us for the Garing Center Private Family Business Awards. Have you? Do you know that, that, that I, crew? I do not. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to make sure you get there next year. It's a, it's a big deal. So your dad starts the business. Was it a, how, how did he start it? What was his, what was the vision? Uh, my dad's experience long term was in the trucking industry. Okay. And so the trucking industry as we know it today basically all sprung into life in about 1982 when Reagan deregulated the trucking industry and allowed anybody who committed to operate safely to enter the business. Okay. Um, so he basically quit his job with a big national carrier and started his own trucking company in 82, sold that about 86, and in 1988 he was working for another trucking company uh, doing as sales director. and. Uh, they started saying, that's great, we need trucking, but when we get to Columbus, we don't have anybody we trust to warehouse our stuff. Oh. So he said, tell me about that. And by the end of the meeting, he had quit his job and signed that customer to a warehousing contract. <laughs> the, uh, the apple didn't fall far from the tree, huh? Correct. Oh, that's... Uh, so we can make a deal. So you put a, uh, your dad puts a, puts a shingle out, and uh, he starts, that's 1988? Eight. I was okay. a sophomore in college at the time and started working with him that first month they were in business. Oh, wow. So you've grown up in the business. Yeah. Uh, all through college, I worked there summers and breaks. And um, so, and even after I graduated, I would take vacation and fly home and keep working. So Wow. Wow. So now here we are 23 years later. Well, probably 25 years yeah. later, right? Well, no, but even longer than that. Yeah, 30, because, we're in our 31st year in business right yeah, now. Yeah, because you, you came out of college. And went to work for a big six accounting firm. I right? did. You're a CPA by trade. I did. Uh, I, I was educated and trained and worked uh, initially out of college as a, a certified public accountant working with large uh, real estate developers and banks for the most part working on uh, their financial audits and issues. So that's going to explain our second business we'll talk about because you got a little something else going on, which we still haven't gotten an invite. Uh, everybody has a lot going on, Billy. It's 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 2019. <laughs> that in in the United States, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think everybody's got as much as you've got going on. Uh, well, you know, I just get up every day and try and make people happy. <laughs> so, talk to us about Spartan Logistics. How are things? Uh, how are things at the company right now? Uh, the logistics industry as a whole has experienced phenomenal growth over the last 40 years as more and more companies continue to outsource, continue to seek help, and really wanted to leverage experts in service industries mm -hmm. like ours. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're happy with our industry and our position in it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've expanded to 17 locations now in nine cities in five states. Wow, congratulations, Steve. That's incredible. What a story. Small little family business starting in Columbus, Ohio. You're in nine different cities now. It's not all, you know, roses and success. Yeah. Uh, all business seem, anymore seems like it's two steps forward and a, and a, and a kick to the stomach. Uh, you know, you, just as soon as you think you've got your hands around everything, uh, you know, you have uh, more setbacks and more challenges and more issues. Yeah. Uh, success is not permanent. And need, failure is never permanent. So That's a great, you know, you did something I thought was really uh, creative and really cool this past summer. Um, but you decided to make, you took your daughter, right? Was I was her. inspired to take, to go visit 
get in my car and drive to visit every single one of our locations and all of our employees on every shift. Wow. So that was um, 2,900 miles total over 13 days. <laughs> I took my daughter who had just graduated high school along as my photographer and co-pilot and driver and you made her drive. Security guard. You made her drive, oh yeah, didn't you? Well, yeah, right. That is way too many miles for me to do all the driving. I made her drive while I worked, of course. But you know, um, but we uh, we had an absolutely great time. Uh, you know, just seeing everybody, talking to everybody, listening to their concerns, uh, having a cookout, food truck. Uh, I left it up to every local location how they wanted to welcome me and how they what they wanted to do while I was there. And they, you know, really surprised me, as, as people will do when you trust them to do great things. Mm -hmm. So what was it you said you were inspired to do? it. What was the inspiration behind it? Was it one of those kick in the stomachs where you thought, I need to go out and get in touch with my people? No. Uh, a friend of mine uh, did it uh, with his company. And mm -hmm. uh, he called it the CEO Roadshow. And every Friday, he went to visit a different one of his locations. Well, his were all in Columbus, so that was no big deal for him. <laughs> you took it to a different level, I brother. I started mapping out what it would take to go to a different location every week and said, I'm going to be gone all summer. That isn't going to work. So then I th said, what if I did, raised it up the next level and did it as an actual roadshow? And so I mapped out what that would take. And believe it or not, this was the easier path. And... Um, it was it was phenomenal to have my daughter along uh, oh, I can as, only a, imagine. as a wingman, and uh, she was absolutely uh, a, a delight. Oh yeah, and you get to do that with her. She's finishing high school, and now she went on to Bowling Green, right? Correct. She's now yeah. a freshman at Bowling Green. Her long term plan is law school, but as I said, there's always hope. You need one of those. Buddy. There's always <laughs> hope. You need one of those. Huh? I have a lot of those already. <laughs> <laughs> one in the family wouldn't hurt. No, but you know, again, she probably want to tell me how to do things so <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about the tell me about the um the impact of that so you i mean there's got to be impact that you started to feel now you're what uh five four or five months after yeah, yeah we trip? did that in june so um it, you know the number one thing that it got was employee engagement i got the feedback that that literally no one had ever really just been thanked before mm. You know, I showed up, and basically my message was, thank you. I'm here mm -hmm. to say thank you mm -hmm. and for what you do for us, for how hard you work, for the late nights, early mornings, mm -hmm. uh, the sacrifices you and your family make for me and my family. My daughter and I are here to say thank you, first of all. Mm -hmm. and second of all, we think we're a great place to work. We hold ourselves to these core values. We offer these benefits. Uh, you know, what What am I not living up to my end of the bargain here, guys? Feel free to ask. Mm -hmm. And um, So it was open forum for them to give you feedback. You wanted you wanted to hear. Completely. Tell me how I can make things better for you and your family. Yep, did his town hall style and just greeted everybody and thanked them and, and you know, just basically tried to reach out and say, that you know, is so we cool. appreciate you. That and, is so cool. And, and so many of the employees said, not only have we never worked anywhere where they thanked us, we've never worked anywhere where they made us a meal, gave us a meal, and, and we've never worked anywhere where even if we did get pizza sometime where the president of the company himself showed up and, like, served us. Yeah. It was so powerful because we know servant leadership works every time it's tried, Billy. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your philosophy there. I mean, you, you know that we at Iron Road have been very outspoken about our leadership style, that we're committed to servant leadership. We believe that, uh, you know, really, if you want to be a great leader... We're going to measure that by your willingness to serve. And so tell me tell me about your experience. You said every time it's tried, it's worked. What do you think about that? I know you're a well-read guy. Well, educate, educate our listeners. Fundamentally, you know, as a man of faith, I believe in leading like Jesus. If, if, if servant leadership worked for Christ, it's going to work for us, right? Kind uh, of changed he, everything, huh? He didn't model just, you know, how to live a good life. He modeled how to live a perfect life. Mm -hmm. And we aspire to, to you know, do be like more like Jesus in everything we do. That's discipleship. Mm -hmm. But so when we apply concepts of servant leadership in our business, it's are my employees safe? Are they being treated the way I want to be treated? Mm -hmm. uh, I would want to be treated. Um, are they equipped and trained with what they need to succeed? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I fundamentally believe that you can either have growth or you can have control. If the business has to rely on me to tell everybody what to do at every opportunity and tell them exactly how everything should always be done, the, my business can only be as big as me. Pretty limited. When I have great people who are passionate about what they do, <clears throat> equipping others to succeed, and uh, I trust to make good judgment, 
the same decision I would make in that circumstance, I have an unlimited capacity for growth and to replicate that, mm-hmm. that's, that leadership model across our, our organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I hear you talking about two things. I hear you talking about servant leadership by meeting the, the things that you know your employees need, just the very practical needs, being safe in the workplace. But then I hear you talk about empowering people. You try to empower people so that the business can grow, right? Certainly. I mean, I, you know, the, when a customer says, I need this and this, the answer is always yes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes hey, that's what a service business is being about. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's yes, and there's some fees associated with that. That's going to cost you, but that's a heck of a lot better than hearing no. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the companies that are run by policy are fundamentally controlled by people who don't trust people to make decisions outside of policy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you have people you can trust who are equipped to make good decisions in, in service of our customers, that that's how we're going to be a great service organization. Yeah, that's well said. So you talked about running a business and that running a business sometimes taking a couple steps forward and then getting kicked in the stomach. That doesn't sound too good, boys. What do you think about that, Ken? Uh, that sounds about par for the course. You know, you, the tech yeah. Sherpa knows a little bit what that's we like. Do, you yeah. and I talked about that Friday, didn't <laughs> yeah. we? You know, it's it's what I tell my kids all the time. Without without failure, there's no success. Yeah, yeah. And like, you learn so much more you do. from it. You do. Yeah. So, Steve, do, give 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 our listeners an example. What's here's a guy that's been, you, you've taken a, a a business and grown it to a point where, I don't know what percentage. I'll make it up, but ninety percent of businesses never reach the size of your business. Doesn't happen. So so give give that guy that or that gal that's getting ready to get started. And they've got a great idea. They're all excited about what they're doing. They're passionate about something, right, Dave? Maybe it's photography. Who knows what it is? Or film. And they're great at it. So they're using a gift that they've been given. They take a couple steps forward, and they get kicked in the gut. Give us a real-life example of how that's happened to Steve Harmon. And what would you do? How would you help the next Steve Harmon get through that? What, what have you? I know some things I've walked through with you. So if you don't bring them up, I'll bring them up. But give, give us an example of one. Um, so... You know, just over the last three years, uh, we thought we were winning when we opened four new locations, and then we lost a major customer of ours that caused us to close three locations. Yeah. Uh, And fire... Big blow, right? Right. And fire 80 people plus about 10 support people. Mm -hmm. Um, And and so, and no sooner had we started to recover from that uh, and added, you know, some more people back and had some success, uh, over the last year. Then just this summer, I got fired from, uh, two locations. The customer came in and said, you know, we've had our merger. You're our top performing locations, but, uh, <laughs> we're gonna fire you? but we're going to fire you anyway, wasn't because we can't. It wasn't, it wasn't the government, was yeah, it? No, <laughs> again, it, it, it's, it's people are always looking for ways to optimize their supply chain yeah. and, and change is constant. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you can't be mad at, at them, uh, for just for trying to continuously improve. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, again, and so no sooner are we starting to deal with shutting those locations down than we get a major new contract just last week that, uh, that we're undertaking right now. So, um, so how did your response to those? You, you listed three negative things. The big contract you lost. You lost two more this summer. What about Spartan's response set you up to be able to, or was it what you were doing all the while? I mean, what, if you were trying to, to, to cast vision into somebody, is there anything that you guys did different that set you up for that future success? No. Is it f- faith? In, in fact, I would say it's being the same. Like, like we make all our decisions around four core values mm-hmm. that, that we talk about all the time, and that's service, teamwork, integrity, and respect. Mm-hmm. And so whether we're operating a location or, or shutting down a location or starting a location, you know, we are trying to hire people uh, who are going to respect us and our core values and the job we have for them. We're trying to... Um, you so know, you co- align your core values with the people you're going to work for. And with, and, and that work for us. And, and, you know, when I people say, how much longer are you going to do this? I, you know, now that I'm so old, I just turned <laughs> 50. Oh, uh, man, I was going to make everybody guess. Uh, We'd have had them coming in. T, uh, we were all over that. She says, uh, you can't possibly be 50. Uh, I, I heard her say that. <laughs> Is that what you, why yeah. are you winking at me? Right, so. Look at that smile, uh, huh? <laughs> she, 
She said she looked so much younger than Billy. You can't be anywhere near his age. <laughs> Billy had a rough night last night. <laughs> um, so anyway, so we, you know, we're going to hire people who align with our values, and then we're going to operate by those. Even like when we have to shut down a location, I personally went down there and said, I'm sorry, guys, this is the way it is. And this is what I'm going to do for you, and this is how we're going to handle it. And, yeah. um, you know, this is the opportunities that I can offer you. If you want to relocate, I can help you with that. Uh, but, you know, there's no sugarcoating. Bad news and fish don't smell any better with age. <laughs> Have you heard that one before? I've never heard that one before. Hey, somebody write that down. Hey, I gotta somebody use tweet that. That. that was brilliant. Somebody tweet that. Let the Donald know that. <laughs> Say that again. Bad News Bad news and, and fish, fish don't smell any better with Where'd age. Where'd you hear that one? Is that a Toledo? I don't know. That's a that's a restaurant joke. You can Google it. It probably I'm not. I that's a good transition. Plagiarized it from someone. That's a, man. We I don't know if we want to talk about your restaurant chain right now because that could be a bad a bad karma with bad fish. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, core values. That's how we're going to operate by. And so like just be by being honest with people by continuing to serve people. You know, the, the, custo- the new customers we have landed have said, hey, you won this business because we feel we can trust you with our stuff. Fundamentally, mm-hmm. you know, selling in a service business is about selling yourself, is about selling trust. People always, you know, everybody that I've talked to that's, that's taken what they've done, whether it's, it's business, whether it's uh, entertainment, whatever it is, but that they've taken it to the next level, they all say the same thing, and that is people – Buy from people. What did I tell you on Friday about you? If people buy from people. Yeah, it's it's all about uh, you can't you, you you won't get anywhere with, with policies and procedures. Uh, they're good to have, but they're not gonna they're not gonna close. Yeah, the but deal. why they're do we use the tech sherpa? I mean, obviously you got to have the core fundamentals of being able to do what you do well. Mm-hmm. But it's it comes down to trust. It comes down to yeah. trust. Yeah. Uh, we trust we trust Ken Bailey with period. Here it is, right? Mm-hmm. So all right, so Steve. How'd you get in the restaurant business? What's up with that? So I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> That's how. Okay. Hang on. Make sure you're recording this. This is important. Point? No, hold on. We're giving to give away our first prize of the day. You talk about, hey, we like to celebrate humbleness. There's All right. There gift. you go. Here's a little gift. Yeah, take another one. All right. Thank you. That was a twofer. All right. <laughs> I'm going to have that whole bin by so the time we're done if that's how we're keeping score. So you're an idiot. Um, so first of all, Make sure you're recording, because I'm going to tell you an important business secret. Yeah, they're recording. Trust I me. have the secret method to making a large fortune with a restaurant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know where this is going. I'm all ears. So, uh, start with an even bigger fortune. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not so good so, so far, I've, huh? So I have said for 30 years that I've been in business, uh, my wife and I agreed to this, certain operating principles – no restaurants or bars ever. They fail at a catastrophic rate. There's so much cash CPA and inventory uh, that you're exposed to. Um, you know, you have employees that are surrounded by alcohol and, and, and bad ideas uh, on a regular basis. <laughs> um, you know, the, you just, there's lots of cash involved in these things. Yeah. No restaurants, no ever, ever. Um, so about... Two years ago, um, we wound up buying a building that uh, was in a mixed-use development that had uh, a retail and uh, an office com- uh, portion. Um, that's comfortable. We're, we own our own real estate development business, and we're comfortable with, with that level of risk o- owning a building. Well, there, there were already free restaurants in the building as tenants, and there was a pl- spot that was absolutely perfect uh, for, a, for a new restaurant. And as you know, we tend to patronize only local restaurants with chefs, not large chains with cooks, um, you know, in terms of food quality and health and, right, and just right. general experience. That, that's how we choose to, to dine out when we choose to do so. So, you know, we wanted to put a locally owned restaurant in this particular spot, and we found a, a great young chef who had a great vision, came to us and said, I've got investors, I've got this all lined up, here's my plan, here's my concept. So we signed him to a, a long-term lease, and we started doing all the build-out in the, in, see, in, in the building. Going, I think. And he comes to us 60 days before <laughs> opening and says, uh, guys, bad news. <laughs> The investors uh, bailed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you see it. Yeah, you see it coming a mile away. I saw that one right here. Yeah, you know, again, oh. yeah, 2020 hindsight, do your own due diligence up front yeah. uh, on people's money, right? But 
Um, the so uh, he says, I'm out. You know, I I can't get to opening day with the money I have. So we sat down and we say, said, okay, what are our choices here? You know, given a lot of bad choices, we give up on the guy, we give up on the concept, we you know literally give up on everything you like, you and like start over. Like the concept, yeah. love the location. So we did the best of a bunch of bad decisions, and we invested. We became the investor in this restaurant that he was looking for, and um, so now we're his partner in in the deal. <laughs> and um, and are you how you doing? Is it rock and rolling? So no, no don't skip ahead of the punchline here, Billy. You're missing the call where I had to call my wife and say, you know how I said I would never own a restaurant. This is why you always avoid saying words like never, because God will make a liar out of you. Um, so, honey, I just accidentally bought a restaurant, was the phone call I had to make. <laughs> and and so when I say accidentally bought a restaurant, it sounds like one of those things like, uh, how does that happen to people? Well, it happens to me. So uh, first year, the restaurant was phenomenally successful. Top new restaurant, top chef. Uh, Toledo, top, right? Toledo. Toledo area, yeah. uh, Levis Commons. Benchmark Restaurant uh, is the name of it. And uh, the phenomenal uh, operators, great menu, great food. Um, so it uh, first year was, a, was, was one of the most successful restaurants. We just won nine Toledo Area Restaurant Awards last wow. week uh, wow. for uh, here in year That's two. That's incredible. Uh, year over year sales are up into the second year, so uh, we're we're you are actually, rocking and rolling. We're actually running a successful local restaurant. No wonder your wife was so happy when we called you the and, other day. And, and again, what did I do? I trusted a great guy to run it, and I got the heck out of his way. Yeah, that's, I equipped him with what he needed. That's well said. He had his own vision, and we supported that. And that's that's so. Tell, talk to me about that because I bet you that ninety um, percent of the entrepreneurs that'll listen to this will tell you the most difficult thing. And we've had some guys on here. Look at Jungle Jim. Mm -hmm. You know, we had Jungle Jim on here who's running, I don't know, he's probably doing $60 million a year out of his place, out of two places. And the, you said something that I think is really tough for most entrepreneurs, which is get out of the way. You mm -hmm. gotta know where your gifts are, where they start, where they stop, and where somebody else's start. So you can turn it over to them. Yeah, I don't drive trucks. I don't drive forklifts. I don't like for, for the business reaches the point where I have to do that. Yeah, but you know what I'm yeah. saying. I mean, there are things where you probably see yourself gifts overlapping, and to really get to that next level, like you were talking about, yeah. you got to be able to see where somebody else may be gifted even more, or gifted to a point where they're ready to be empowered to take it to the next level. So getting out of the way of that person is not an easy thing to do. No. And, and we've had phenomenal luck with internal growth by people, like people who started off working in the warehouse and have come up through a supervisor, manager, yeah. executive level. Yeah, just growing through the business. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, Steve, anything else you want to tell? If you, if you had one thing to say to somebody, let's, let's say um, – Blake, you met my son, Blake. Yep. Blake's graduating from college this year. Blake, let's say Blake wants to get into business. He wants to start a business. If you had a, a platform or a, just – if you could say three things to him that you'd want to pass on after 30 years' experience in business, what would you say? First thing I tell every young person is be prepared to work your tail off. Mm. Life isn't fair. Nothing comes easy. Nobody owes you a thing. Mm. And you got to wake up every day on the hunt, go find something, kill it, drag it home, and find out a way to make money with it. Um, that is hard to do. Um, so first, get in on the ground floor in what kind of business you would want to work on. If that's a restaurant, if that's a marketing shop, if that's a, if that's a uh, you know, when I want to start my PEO someday, uh, <laughs> you know. Hey, get, remind me to have him sign that thing before you leave, right? <laughs> Get in on the ground floor. Work your tail off. Be the first one to get there, the last one to leave. Be inquisitive. Ask questions. Do anything mm. anybody asks you ever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can sleep when you're old like me, but uh, when you're young, work your tail mm -hmm. off and be willing to learn. Mm -hmm. and seek opportunities and mentoring and, and relationships at every opportunity. Mm -hmm. You said first. Is that it? What's that? Is that it? That's the first thing I would tell them. Then, you know. I know you well enough. All I got to do is do a little bit right? of this. It'll keep coming. 
stage two is, okay, now I've identified an opportunity. Do I have the money for that? You know, don't get debt ahead of, of, of common sense and, uh, and, uh, and sales because make sure you got the funding. Yeah, yeah. debt debt is yeah. Make sure you have those investors lined up. Uh, the, <laughs> and um, if not, you need a good backup. Yeah, I would tell Blake to call his dad. So, uh, um, so uh, but you got in business with your dad too. Uh, you know, we we've both learned a ton from our dads. I could not have started this business on my own. Uh, I can run a business now that it's up and running, but to have the vision and and naked aggression that my yeah. dad had to start this business yeah. that's not necessarily my skill set no, i have loved dad. working with my dad for 30 years and i consider it one of the greatest joys of my adult life isn't that awesome yeah it really I mean, is it's, there's nothing better than that i can't imagine how frail your dad is and now what about nick do you do you see does he want to come into the business or um i want nick to do the same thing i did i spent five years working somewhere else yeah. getting my own vision yeah. for how business working getting trained and mentored but it's awfully hard to be properly trained and disciplined when your front name's on the door yeah like it's just not fair to a kid it's to well um to to be held apart separate and learn humility and that kind of work ethic i'm talking yeah. about i don't like it can work uh, but I, I don't think it's a best practice. Yeah, yeah, that's well said. Um, I've re- encouraged him repeatedly to go discover your own purpose, your own passion, your own God-given talents, and if and when you're ready to come work for us and those talents align with what we have going on at that time, we'd, I'd love to talk to you about it then. Man, that um, takes a so lot. no promises. <clears throat> yeah, that takes a lot. I don't think I could tell my kids that. Um, I will tell your kids that. You want me to? I think I, I think I just did. Make sure they play this. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I hired my kid right out of college. She came here, started working in Columbus, was doing great. Went through. She decided to make a change. Then she got a better offer. Got a better offer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Moves to Charlotte for Insight Global, and she's a superstar. I'm like, where was this? So yeah. we just we just had a little hiccup when we got started. That's all. Yeah, you know, again, hey, nothing's got, carved in stone until you're dead. I got an idea with Nick. I say we we raise a little money and we try to get him on tour. Boy can swing a club. Man. Yeah, he's a he's a great golfer. That's for sure. Oh my uh, goodness! How's his. their year this year? You just had that whole team up to uh, yeah I, Inverness, I, I, right? For and, for his, my son's a senior in college as well, um, graduating from Mount Vernon Nazarene uh, in the spring, and he's on their golf team. And uh, their golf team's off to a rough start, uh, but uh, he's uh, playing absolutely great right now. So, um, you know, like I said, uh, lowest but, score he but, shot all year, uh, seventy-one. Wow. Uh, but the but again, there's ten thousand zero handicap golfers, and Not there's one hundred and twenty-five with the tour card. Not amazing. Uh, and they ain't giving it up. So yeah. you know, if 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 turning pro is your is your plan, you better have a backup plan, yeah. right? So, yeah. Well said. He's a great kid, though. He's got a great future ahead of him, that's for sure. Thank you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Steve, awesome to be with you today. Thank you so much for coming down and hanging with us. Billy, uh, always enjoy our conversations. We're going to have you back on, man. All right. We're going to have you back on. We're going to dig a little deeper, but you've uh, you've left us with some great tidbits today. Thanks for being here. Hey, right. oh, Thank yeah, you, yeah, 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 wait a minute. Our, our, parting, our parting, now usually, so we'll give you an option. You can either sing, I mean, if you want. I mean, you, you pick your song. We'll, we'll sing with it, won't right. we? Or you can do an impression. You do any impressions? Um, I, and now I'm on the spot. Yeah, I, well, I wish, I'd, I wish yeah. I'd been warned. Yeah, that's all right. Well, no, we don't warn. That's part of it, and we want to see how you do on the on the on the spot when oh, you're on the hot. I'll seat. leave you to this one. Okay. I knew it wouldn't take him long. You see that? <laughs> there is no try. Do or do not. <laughs> Now listen, we've had some guys. That, can you do that again? It's it's recorded, but I can do it again. There is no try, do or do not. <laughs> do you know who it is? Is that Yoda? Indeed. Yoda. Nice, buddy. There's great wisdom in the Yoda. Uh, yeah. So great job, buddy. Thanks hey, for being thanks, here, Billy. Steve. Enjoyed it.